this week, money, money, money. We are talking fuel saving tips when you are out on the road. Plus we have a listener question about how do you decide exactly which RV is right for you at the beginning of your search. This is the RV Miles Podcast. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean, dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just right layers perfect for changing weather, to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean. Be an outsider. Welcome to episode 206 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our three boys, have been crisscrossing North America since 2016 on one epic road trip. Here at RV Miles, we talk about everything from lifestyle and destinations to industry news, our national parks, and so much more. We are getting ready to pick up our fifth wheel, uh, maybe, some point soon. (laughs) Uh, It has been delayed again. (laughs) Uh, to no one's fault. It's well, just the nature of the beast right the, now. Yeah, there there was an issue with getting glue to the factory for <laughs> laminating sidewalls. And uh, still part of that big Texas freeze-up, I think, where a lot of the glue factories had all their equipment destroyed. So Texas continues to bite us in the butt <laughs> all these months <laughs> later. So, you know, hey, if you are thinking of starting a glue business, if that's been something that's been on your heart and your mind, <laughs> now might be the time to do it. Well, I guess I guess part of it is getting the chemicals to make the glue as well, though, is a, is another issue. Well, if you want to start a chemical company, <laughs> there you go. Or maybe just a generator company. I mean, there's so many options right now. Texas needs a lot of options. We have been getting our truck ready, though. We got, uh, we've got. we had our bed rug installed for a while, sort of half installed, and now it's now it's permanently installed because we were able to get our, our goose ball installed. The B&W turnover ball is what we went with that our Anderson hitch is going to attach to. And uh, really happy with that thing, really impressed with the install from uh, STS Sport Truck Specialties here in Davenport, Iowa. And then I was able to go back and get our bed rug completely installed. And if you don't know what a bed rug is... It's like a trunk carpet for the the bed of your truck. And we've had it now for a little over, I don't know, a month or so, a little more. A little longer, yeah. And we have really loved it. It was great for sitting and watch fu- watching fireworks in. You know, it's 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 something that you want to keep covered all the time. But we, we really like having a soft surface in the bed, especially like on your knees, getting up there, moving stuff around. And we don't haul dirty stuff. We haul our, you know, our life with us. So it's nice to have like a clean, nice space in there. And I love it. It's not the best right now in this super humid weather. Not that really being outside is the best right now anyway. If you are watching this, by the time this show is over, Jason and I's faces will have melted off. Yeah. For sure. We are in the middle of that heat dome. We're going to talk a little bit more about it later in our black tank. Surprise, surprise. But yeah, it's been great to have that in the back of the truck. There's just nothing about being outside right now that's great. We got a listener question from Phil, who has been uh, listening to the podcast quite a bit and uh, says it's one of his favorites, and I'm I'm really so grateful. We're both so grateful to have you here, Phil. Um, Phil is trying to figure out RV life for him. His wife passed away a few years ago, and uh, it was their plan to get an RV and travel and see places and people and family when they retired, and Phil doesn't want to give up on that dream, and uh, he's trying to figure out how to even begin though how do you how do you even start knowing what type of rv is for you and how do you go about you know then figuring out the financing and all that sort of stuff and uh, this question really hit me hard because i you know we always we talk about a lot of different things like uh you know what to look for when you're shopping for an rv and, and all this sort of stuff that we talk about and have over the years but how do you actually start? Like, how do you actually decide what is right for you? 
Well, A, you decide you want to do it, right? Um, And then I think when I was thinking about this question, I felt like really the only way we could answer it is to talk about our own personal experience and what was super important to us when we first started on our journey. And that really was dedicated sleeping space for the boys. We knew that we did not want to convert anything, that we didn't want people sharing beds. We wanted everyone to have their own space because this was going to be our full-time home. So that really immediately started ticking off a few things that we couldn't look at that weren't going to work for a family of five. Now, ultimately, price was also a big driving factor for us. And we ended up converting a school bus and doing what we needed to do for our family. So my advice to Phil would be, or to anyone, would be to pick one thing, not that you think is important, but that is important to you where you live right now. In your current lifestyle, not not the dream that you see on YouTube and Instagram <laughs> stuff, but what is important in your life right now that you right. want to continue? Do yeah. you enjoy cooking? Is a big living space because you like to have family movies or you know you like to be able to stretch out at the end of the night? Is a big bed important to you? Do you know things like that? If you have small ones or yourself in general, maybe you want a bathtub in the bathroom. You know, that was something we landed with that we weren't looking for, but I absolutely loved having in our trailer. So I would say start there. Maybe just one or two items. Of course, those are gonna shift. But start there. Think about what's important to you in your home right now and see how you can make that happen in this RV that you're looking for, especially for full-time living. Yeah, and I don't know if Phil wants to go full-time, but he wants to travel quite a bit, which is virtually the same thing. But Phil did ask specifically about uh, pros and cons of towing versus driving and large versus small. And we do have Gosh. an article on the website that goes through all the different types of RVs and some of the pros and cons of each. But real quickly, I, I, I would say as a solo traveler, there are so many benefits to going small. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the ability to choose from so many more campsites, from so many more uh, boondocking locations lots more boondocking locations open up for a small rv and even like boondockers welcome sites and and, and uh, pavement parking and all that sort of stuff the smaller you are the more that opens up so i would say i think it is best for most people to be as small as you're comfortable in but then as far as towing versus a drivable goes we really landed for us on which you know obviously we started out in a drivable in our in our converted school bus but as full timers it's really nice to be in a towable because if there is something wrong with the RV we don't have to sit in a hotel room for weeks as we had to do when we were in the bus well we've talked about this a lot and that really comes down to only having one engine to care for as opposed to two. Mm -hmm. That's a very personal preference. And so, again, that was something very important to us when we decided it was time to move out of Wanderbus. Uh, You know, that thing about small versus large, driving versus towing, again, I think that that has to be a question you ask yourself. Do I want to do essentially some of the extra work? That, that comes with all of that. Each has its own special set of responsibilities. If you're towing your vehicle, well, then you're going to be taking that on and off all of the time. If you're towing the RV, well, you're going to be backing that in. You're going to be unhooking it. So there's a lot that goes with that. And you just kind of have to ask yourself of these two, which one seems more manageable for me, especially as a solo traveler too, because you're going to be responsible for all of this. You know, we're very fortunate to be able to split up some of these duties, but you, know, you will be the one who has to do all of it. I, if 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 it were you and me, um, or if I was solo or whatever, if it, if it was... Oh, is this your dream you're about no, to talk well, about yeah, when yeah. you're out solo <laughs> traveling? No, if we didn't have the kids with us, if the kids were you know, gone and, and in school or whatever, mm-hmm. um, in college... I think one what would be great a, a great setup right now is something like the like the F150 hybrid which has that which basically can act as a generator itself mm-hmm. right with a one of these new sort of 
adventure style travel trailers like Forest Rivers Ibex or Cruiser RVs Hitch. Uh, Winnebago has one as well. They're these little trailers that uh, are are meant to be able to be dragged off into some of these boondocking spots, and they're they're fairly sh- short and small. That would be kind of I think my dream setup at at the moment for. For non-family travel. So, Phil, we do hope that you will keep us updated on what you do decide to go with. And I do think it's really beautiful that you are continuing this dream that you and your wife had. And I know that whatever you land with, she's going to be there with you as you travel around. All right. uh, Moving on, a couple events coming up that we want to remind you about. Tickets are still available for the RV Entrepreneur Summit. If you're going to be anywhere in sort of the western Colorado area, we hope you'll join us there. September 9th through 12th is going to be a lot of fun for anybody looking to run a business from the road or location independently, whether you want to be in an RV or not. I know I've talked to Heath Paget uh, recently, and he said there are only about 10 or 12 spots available. So if you do want to go, tickets are $250 for the event, and boondocking is available for a fee beginning uh, Monday, September 6th. That is per person, not per couple, so $250 per person. And they have an amazing lineup of speakers, and we're really honored to be able to join them for this event and we look forward to you coming as well and if you can't make something like that we'll be a part of the full-time freedom week virtually on the internet (laughs) september 20th through the 24th we'll be presenting a video on exploring national parks as full-time RVers. Yeah, so the cost to attend the event live as it's happening is totally free. I do believe that they will have uh, purchase ticket options where it allows you then to view everything post-event. So go over to Full-Time Freedom Week. They're on Facebook. You can check all that out for the updated information. And again, thank you to them for inviting us to do that as well. September is a really busy month. Heath also did tell me that they are working on a live stream option for the RV Entrepreneur Summit and actually I think that will be free as well, but it's only going to be the main stage presentation. So you can watch us on that. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, speaking of live, before we take the break, our monthly Ask Us Anything, the monthly night live is happening on the first Monday of the month. So it's actually going to be, by the time you are listening to this, the upcoming Monday. So it will not be happening from the fifth wheel as we had hoped, but it will be happening and we hope that you will join us. It starts at 8 p.m. Eastern and that is on the RV Miles on YouTube, as well as RV Miles and Our Wandering Family on Facebook, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. We'll be back in a minute with some tips on saving money on fuel. Be right back. A summer cold on the road can really dampen the adventure, which is why Cold Fade is dedicated to protecting you from the unexpected and unwelcome common cold. Each Cold Fade pack includes four common over-the-counter medications from leading U.S. manufacturers, a travel case, Cold Fade's research-based strategy, and a mobile app designed to notify you of what medications to take and how and when to take them. Take the guesswork out of cold relief with Cold Fade. Visit coldfade.com. That's C-O-L-D-F-A-I-D.com. Find peace of mind today and be prepared for tomorrow with Cold Fade. RV season is here, but the change of seasons also brings rain, mud, pollen, and other elements that you have to waste your time cleaning, or worse, that can end up damaging your vehicle. Whether you own a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a truck camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire has just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protect it from UV rays. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use the promo code RV Miles at checkout. All right, well, fuel costs are getting very high right now, so saving money on fuel is on a lot of people's minds. So we decided that we would round up a few tips for saving money on fuel. And that can be figuring out how to actually buy it cheaply or (laughs) some driving tips as well that will help you save fuel while you're actually driving down the road. But let's start with talking about actually getting fuel in the first place. Do you wanna start with the first one? Sure, I would love to. And actually, as I'm looking at it here on the teleprompter, it's 
I'm curious about it because I don't know this one. Oh, so then let me do it. Let no, I can see. read it. Okay. <laughs> no, I can I can read and learn at the same time, Jason. It's a skill. <laughs> okay. It's quality production value we have for you here today. <laughs> you can tell who put together today's episode. Okay. So don't buy gas when there's a delivery truck at the station. Recent deliveries stir up sediment, which can clog your fuel filter. Yeah, it's not really going to save you money on fuel, but it's going to save you money on repairs. I just okay. learned that as, as well as putting this together. Wow. And, and it's really the only one that's not about saving money on actual fuel. But I thought that was a really important thing to throw out there is that if the truck is at the, at the station, it makes a lot of sense. They're dumping gas thousands of gallons of fuel in that in that underground tank it's stirring up any sediment that's gone to the bottom and that can come up through the pump and go into your filter okay well good to know that i'm going to go to the next station if i see a (laughs) tank there all right you want to go next yes an actual fuel saving tip (laughs) properly inflated tires they're obviously safer to have your tires inflated correctly and they last longer but they can improve your gas mileage by three percent per tire. Wow. So if all of your if all four of your tires on your tow vehicle are or on your motorhome are are well below where they should be, you can be losing, you know, up to 11 <laughs> I'm doing math, up to 12% on your fuel mileage. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. So this next one I actually do know. So okay. I can be a little bit more confident here for you. Gas stations near major highways often charge more for gas because land is generally more valuable in those locations, increasing overhead costs. So if you just head into town a little bit, even a mile, that can make a huge difference. And I am a huge advocate of this. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the truck stops especially can be, can be much more expensive. Now, often you want to... If you got a big motor home or uh, if you're pulling a big fifth wheel, you want to use those truck lanes yes. and that you're paying for the convenience of that. But if you can get away from those, sometimes those truck stops are very expensive. Even if you're saving like, you know, you've got the good Sam discount for the Flying J, uh, y- even if you're saving that whatever three to five cents, it, it can often be a lot cheaper if you're able to go further away. That said, if you must fill up near the highway, try stations near state border lines, which tend to price their gasoline less aggressively. Yeah. I do like less aggressive gas. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, <laughs> we I think we've found that it does have to be like right at the state border lines. It's not yeah. like you can't be like 20 miles from the border. Like that doesn't make a difference. But if they're trying to get people across the border to use their station, especially if, if you're on the side that has a little bit lower gas taxes – you can often get cheaper fuel. We do that here a lot where my parents live on the Iowa-Illinois yeah, border. We go to Iowa for less aggressive <laughs> gas. It's much less aggressive in <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> Check out the Gas Buddy app. Uh, this is probably the biggest tip we have. Check out the Gas Buddy app to find the best prices. I've gotten really into using Gas Buddy lately because if you confirm price, all the prices in there are user generated. So if you, when you're at a gas station, uh, confirm the prices for them, they give you points and you, you they allow you to use those points to enter to win stuff but then they also have like a gas buddy credit card that you can save money and stuff but regardless being able to see the prices at every fuel station nearby makes a big difference especially because we try to get fuel as a as a trailer owner mm-hmm before we hit the road so if we're going to hook up that morning and leave we're usually filling up the truck the night before and trying not to stop for fuel that that on the drive day or if we do we're only stopping once yeah and let's say too that gas buddy is not sponsoring no. this i don't even think gas buddy knows we're alive <laughs> so this is this is really genuinely our opinion on gas buddy we really used that pretty aggressively too let's go back to texas when we were trying to figure out what stations actually had fuel. They would show if a station had been reported as out of fuel. Mm -hmm. So that was a really great lifesaver for us, too, because we're towing that trailer and we needed to know whether or not it made sense for us to stop. So, Gas Buddy, if you aren't using it, start using it. If you can participate in fuel savings card programs, all the stations have their own. And you can, we're members of like three or four. You can just grab their free card, right? It's like the grocery store. <laughs> I don't know how many more grocery store, like little tiny keychain cards I can have, but apparently everyone has their own now. <laughs> but if you are a diesel owner, check into the TSD logistics card. A lot of people, a lot of diesel owners talk about this and 
it allows you to use the commercial pumps. You know, normally if you use the, the trucker's pumps, you have to go inside and ask them to start the pump for you, or you mm -hmm. have to call the, press the button and call or whatever. Um, they, this card will allow you to start the pump, first of all, which is, which is nice. Uh, but it debits directly from your checking account. So you do have to link your checking account to it. But people are often saving with this TSD logistics card, I'm not kidding, 50 cents per gallon. Wow. It's really wild. It's a no-brainer if you're traveling heavy with a large diesel. Boy, wish we had had that a few years I, ago. I do wow. as well. I don't think it was available when we had had the bus. I think it, it's it's fairly a, a fairly recent thing. Now this next one is going to be your favorite here. <laughs> and all you wrote was Costco exclamation <laughs> yes. point. I don't know that I need to say anymore. <laughs> there is a reason that we became members of Costco, and it is uh, first off so Jason can get his giant box of Belvitas, but second. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get a discount on fuel. And here's the thing. So we just talked about, you know, how we go over to Iowa for less aggressive gas. So we also have a Costco in Iowa, in the Davenport area. We can go, we're here in Illinois. We can go over to that Costco in Davenport. And it is probably a 40 cent difference between what we would pay here in the Rock Island area compared to what we will pay in Davenport. And so just having the Costco card is going to save, you're going to pay $50 for that card. You are going to make that up in what you save for fuel, especially with this beast back here at what, 32 gallons? Is yeah. that what we have? And yeah. we, we, use, uh, we use regular grade fuel, but mm -hmm. um, my dad has to use premium in his car. And he says that the, the gas at Costco, the premium is often only like 10 cents more than the regular, yeah, which is wild. It's a great deal. So it's an investment worth making. All right, let's talk about some actual driving tips, how you can save fuel while you're driving, because that's one of the biggest places where you're actually going to save money. And the first one is really about just not being a lead foot. Oh, I feel like someone <laughs> is throwing some shade at me hey, right oh, now. I, I feel like somebody Ooh. is feeling a little self-conscious oh. right now. See, you have learned. You've learned the ways. You've seen. You've what? You've watched the 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 the, the yes, gas. You've watched the fuel meter in the truck long enough to know that I'm getting way better <laughs> gas mileage than you are. And now you've realized that okay, you're going to drive a little bit slower. I don't think you know this, but you and I are currently in a competition yes. to see who can. It's one you will never win because you're way <laughs> way more impatient than me when it comes to driving. Well, when I drove us from, I think it was here to Chicago, uh, you better believe I got in and I saw where that was at and I was like oh that what that's what he got mm, I'm gonna get better than that and I'm gonna win this well, I, you don't know it we're always <laughs> you didn't know that was happening that's been happening although vehicles reach their optimal fuel economy at different speeds gas mileage or diesel mileage usually decreases rapidly over 60 miles per hour the difference between driving 70 miles per hour and 63 miles per hour can be a 10% fuel savings. Oh, I don't like that. That's wild. And especially mm. when you're towing, it makes even a bigger difference when you're towing as well. So well, Jason, when the <laughs> GPS is like, you will arrive at 152 and you're like, Just I bet I can get there at 151. You, you the time. Okay. I, <laughs> I have a different game for, I have a different game for you. you see, I, it, it, a, literally a lot of people play games as they drive. And one yes. of the games that they often play is can I beat the, the GPS timer? I have a yes. different game for you in a minute that's going to help. Okay. But before we get to that, ditch the cruise control, especially on hills. It's fine on the flats and it's gonna make all those little micro adjustments to actually help you save fuel mileage on the flats. But there, if there are hills, and I mean mild hills, you know, driving across the interstate across Iowa, there's still plenty of hills. If the, the cruise control does not know when you're reaching the top of the hill. So it is just speeding along, trying to get you up that hill and it, it doesn't let go until you've gone over the hump and then it's got to slow you down and you're losing fuel mileage between all those changes. You're also shifting your transmission more and all that sort of stuff. If you, if, if possible, only accelerate before you reach the hill and not while you're on it and, or at least let up on the gas way before you get to the crest of the hill and then let the downhill bring you back up to speed a little bit. Boy, there is a reason why you drive more than I do. This is so much to 
remember. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is even on a cold morning, avoid warming up your engine at idle. We've talked about that yes. a lot in the past. It sitting your vehicle, warming it up for for many, many minutes at a time. Some people do it for like a half hour. There is no actual reason to do that. You can warm it up while driving on your drive out of the campground or out of your neighborhood. That is warming up your vehicle to get it to operating temperature just as much as sitting at idle does. In fact, sitting at idle often doesn't bring you up to operating temperature at all, which is bad for your engine because your all the parts haven't expanded to the right amount, right? So if you can just start it up and go but not go you don't want to like get on the highway and slam on the gas and go 70 miles an hour but if you can you know drive at 10 15 miles an hour out of your neighborhood or out of the campground that's how you warm up your vehicle and you're saving fuel by not having it sit at idle so you're about to talk to me about this game but i'm going to tell you i've been playing this game for years <laughs> and i would actually argue that you're the one of the two of us who needs this game more than <laughs> i do i've been playing this game since the time of the chrysler town and country well your game is just trying to make the green lights but the, my game <laughs> yeah i want to keep going no but you want to feel that way see, if i keep going the, <laughs> Braking obviously is is one of the worst things that you can do for fuel mileage, and of course you have to use your brakes when you're supposed to use your brakes. So don't just avoid your using your brakes for fuel mileage purposes. But if you can make a game out of timing traffic lights and and any sort of like backups, so that you don't have to use your brakes much, it can really save on fuel mileage. So uh, traffic lights are are usually timed. If, if in the right places they're not yeah. always there but they're usually timed so that if you travel at the speed limit you're and, and you're go, say you're going down a stretch of of a road that's 40 miles an hour and it's got 10 traffic lights they're usually timed so that you're only going to hit one or two of those traffic lights if you're going the speed limit if you're going faster than the speed limit or much slower you're going to hit more of them so ideally, you, you you just take your one light and you travel at the speed limit. Now, what I like to do and what you apparently say you like to do, I don't believe it, is watch the traffic lights and try to time them in your head and try to preemptively slow down. You might, you might even break early so that you're not stopping because stopping really, really ruins your gas mileage. Yeah. Listen, I think you use this, she's not going to interrupt me so I can like get some jabs in there in that because I absolutely pay attention, especially when we lived in Chicago. That is why I have been playing this game as long as I have, <laughs> is you get that countdown. So if I know I'm coming up and it's like three, two, one, I know immediately yeah, just that that light, yeah. Float right off the gas. Wait, there's right. no point. Yeah. Might as well just floor it. And I should make it through okay. <laughs> no. You take your foot <laughs> off the gas. No, no flooring it ever. Anytime you're accelerating heavily, I know you're joking, but anytime you're heavy, heavily accelerating, you're just wasting fuel. Yeah. And can we even listen? Who's accelerating in Chicago? Yeah. Well, come on. And then the cab drivers. The cab drivers. <laughs> the Uber drivers. All right. Well, those are our fuel saving tips. If you have some fuel saving tips, Maybe you could leave them in the comments on YouTube or on in the Facebook group uh, if you're a podcast listener, uh, or you could leave them on the post. Yes, at rvmiles.com slash 206. And we should mention anything that we talked about earlier on the RV Entrepreneur Summit, the Full-Time Freedom Week, or Ask Us Anything. You don't need to go search all those out. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to put them at rvmiles.com slash 206. You can get everything you need right there. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV and the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector made by Hughes Autoformers beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small affordable part you can replace yourself. Hughes will even give you a free surge module in the first two years and now they have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoformers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S, Autoformers.com. It is time for our Fresh Tank Black Tank segment where we, you know, 
talk about how we feel today. How how are t how, how full are our tanks right now? Um, <laughs> well, my black tank is pretty full. If I'm going to give it to the humidity, because. Uh -huh. This is <laughs> my my shirt is soaked. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I feel like I could just ring myself out here for you all on the video version of the show because it is so humid. I mean, this is the reminder of why a Midwest summer is real rough. It's rough. I mean, a Southern summer is real rough too. I don't want to make it seem like we're only the only ones in the Midwest who get humidity, but this is so thick. It's so suffocating and we've been out here now for about 45 minutes and I cannot describe like I don't I love you but I don't want to stand next to you because <laughs> it's just I can see we're just seeping humidity off of ourselves should I should I touch don't your touch face me. or your hair no be great you should not touch me <laughs> at all so we are in the middle of this heat dome that if you listened to the Saturday RV and camping news report that Jason did you know that that is covering a huge swath of the country right now it's, pre it's pretty much all the country it's it's yes. all the lower 48 except okay. for like the far northeast well there you go then and I mean we are looking right now where we're at we are in a heat advisory that started at about noon today. It will not let up until 10 o'clock tomorrow night. So that, that is my black tank. All right, what's in your fresh tank? So my fresh tank goes to our little Toyota Corolla that we drove around for an entire week in Chicago because... I hated that thing, so oh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. Okay, so we all hated it because we got in it and it was like everyone was kissing their knees. I got in it, and I was the primary driver last week. I forgot to add Jason to the <laughs> rental. I got in it, and it was like riding a bike in Chicago. I was like, oh, we are going to zip everywhere. I can put. I, I was parking that thing into spaces that I was laughing because if you've ever seen Austin Powers, you know when he's in that golf cart and he gets stuck in, like he's underground in that arena, and he's just backing up, backing up in the wall. Like back and forth, back yeah. and forth. Okay. That is exactly what it was like sometimes trying to park this little Toyota Corolla because, you know, you're trying to find parking in Chicago and you're going to take anything you can get your hands See, on. See, the whole time I was thinking, I could do this in the truck. Oh, no. <laughs> no way. But it was just, I mean, I felt like I was back in the city again. You don't forget what it is like to drive in the city when you have driven for so long. I would not have enjoyed that in the truck. I loved it in the little Corolla. I was like, you're not going to let me in? Oh, yes, actually, you are, because I'm in a Corolla. <laughs> it was so much fun, but I was very, very happy to get back into the truck because I was very happy to be able to stretch out because <laughs> it was a very tiny little car, especially for you. <laughs> All right, Jason, what is in your black tank? Oh, I see it already. Speaking yeah, of. Yeah, you know, okay, so we, we talked a lot on, on our social media about being in Chicago over the course of the, the week where we were there. And, you know, a lot, a lot of people like to chime in and mention, oh, be safe. You know, it's a dangerous place. And uh, obviously we live, lived there 16 years. And But I, I, the narrative is that the, 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 my black tank isn't about those people in general. It, it, because they're coming from a, a, a good place but the the there's this national narrative about chicago being a really dangerous place to visit and there, there is a crime problem there is a high murder rate there uh, but i i gotta tell you there, there's this thing that i think i've learned as we've traveled the country is that we put so much emphasis on imaginary borderlines mm -hmm. and if you redrew chicago in a different way it would be one of the safest cities in in the country and, and if you go to the tourist touristy areas of chicago they are just so nice and i i've never felt completely unsafe and and I, they're, they're you, of course anytime you're in a big city you got to watch your back and you got to you got to be careful but there are so many other cities so many smaller cities that are actually more dangerous that we're not paying attention to you know if you actually look at where Chicago ranks on the most dangerous cities per capita mm -hmm. in the country, usually most years it's not even in the top fifty. I think last year it was in the it was number thirty two. Okay. There are thirty two thirty one cities more dangerous than Chicago and a lot of them are very popular touristy destination areas like 
Myrtle Beach. Yeah, let's point out, too, that it's also it was 32, but it is also the third highest populated yeah. city in our country. So there are smaller towns with less people doing a whole lot more awful things in that little town. Yeah, and you got to judge it per capita. you got to judge it by the, your chances of having something happen to you, right? I think, though, at the end of the day, if I can jump on your black tank, because I almost black tanked this, too. Uh, I think that for the most part, let's just be honest, that narrative to us will always fall on deaf ears. Yeah. Like, it just will. We lived there. We lived it. We know it. We still have people that live there. And so it's very, very, very difficult for, you know, us to sit there and listen to those spin a narrative about Chicago that we know firsthand is not true. And, uh, you know, I'm sure this is going to upset a few people, but I'm sorry, you don't know you didn't live there. Yeah. And just because you hear it on the news doesn't mean that it's real. Yeah. I, you know, I, I got to say that. So, you know, if you think ever that a negative narrative about Chicago that isn't really rooted in true honest facts because you know we love the facts here but if you're not going to root that in true real facts we are not going to be here for it ever yeah yeah what's in your fresh tank okay uh we saw one of the greatest uses of an rv a few uh maybe a week or two ago that i i keep meaning to mention and i I posted about this in the rv miles facebook group and people said they've seen lots of that as well but we were at a farmer's market here where there was a pet groomer that had converted a class B camper van into a, a mobile pet grooming business. And, you know, of course, there's water on board, there's air conditioning on board, there's electricity for all the grooming stuff. And they, they you know, basically cleared out all the seating and stuff and just put those big pet groomer tables mm-hmm. in and had the vacuum overhead and the hoses and, and stuff like that. Just like it builds. And it's so wonderful because, you know, there are so many pets that are skittish about going to a place like that, be sitting in a cage waiting to get groomed while there's a whole bunch of other pets there that they may or may not get along with, uh, or they don't like car rides. My parents' dog just cannot deal with car rides. So they just pull up into your driveway and groom your pet right in your driveway, and it's totally air-conditioned and everything, and it's awesome. It's pretty sweet. I so. thought it was a wonderful idea, and I think there should be more businesses like that. I think we need to have, like, salons on the oh road. I think God. all sorts of stuff, massages. Oh, man. Yeah, if someone could just pull up at my campsite with their mobile spa, that would be so sweet. All right. It is time to wrap this episode up with our RV community tip of the week. And this one comes from Kimberly over at Cruisin' and Camp fires social media and this one doesn't have audio so i'm just going to explain it to you but if you're listening to the audio version there's a little bit of video to accompany it but the tip is that if you have little ones uh, kids or pets that press on your screen door you want to have your main door of your rv open but the screen door closed Mm -hmm. and those screen doors they don't latch very well right so if you press on them hard enough they'll open and you don't want your kids tumbling out or you don't want your dogs running away So this is an awesome tip if you have one of those folding handles on the outside of your RV. So you have your steps and you have that that big D-shaped handle that folds open to help you get up the stairs. The tip is that when your screen door is closed, Open that little silly door that allows that allows you to attach your 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 screen door to your main door, and reach out and close that big D-shaped handle over your door, which will help keep your screen door shut. I thought that was an awesome tip. That is pretty awesome. So thank you for sharing that with us. And we'd like to throw this out to you who is listening or watching. If you have a tip like that, if you have made a video, be it a short on YouTube or on Instagram or you have a photo that accompanies the tip, we would really love to share it. We would really love to continue to amplify those in the RV community who are sharing these kinds of ideas that just kind of make life a little bit easier for all of us. So thank you to everyone who has joined us so far. And you are always welcome to tag us across social media or just give us an email at editor at rvmiles.com with a link to where we can find the content or include it there in the email itself. And we would love to feature you on a future episode. Our thanks again to Kimberly at Cruising and Campfires, and we'll link to their social media in the show notes as well. That's it for this week's episode. 
That's it. We made it without completely melting our faces oh, off. I'm almost there. <laughs> almost there. That breeze we got just a second ago really helped. So, hey, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. As we ask every single week if you are enjoying the show, will you please head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a five-star review? Y'all, we are getting so close to one thousand reviews so thank you to everyone who has joined us so far you are putting rv miles in front of a whole new generation of listeners jason and i can be found all across social media instagram youtube facebook tiktok we'd love to connect with you best way to connect with us though is the rv miles facebook group with over ten thousand amazing members until next week thank you so much for watching don't forget to take us shopping with you on Amazon. That's amazon.com slash shop slash RV miles. And we will see you next week. Keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. <laughs>